Hello, welcome to another Igloo Imaging tutorial. This one's on a 3D logo. It's sort of a reflective kind of claw looking logo. It's based on a, a video I watched. It didn't have any audio descriptions. Um, it was just basically watching the person design this. So I've decided to put my own take on it and help you create something along the same lines. Um, if we start by looking at the colors used, um, if you press pause and you can add these colors to your um, your swatches, um, they're various gradients. So this gradient represents this bit here. Um, the yellow to sort of dark yellowy greeny color is the um, highlighted color. Uh, this is the uh, white gradient. It just so happens to have opacities on so 50% on the left and zero on the right as we go along I'll explain it all this is also the glow uh, the drop shadow color here um, as we go along I'll, I'll come back to those but if you just want to sort of press pause copy those colors um, the artboard is 1920 pixels by 1080 so if you set your artboard up that same size then you should be able to follow along um, fairly easily. The background colour here is just a, a sort of black uh, to grey um, radial colour um, in Adobe Illustrator 2021. Uh, my background's locked so it shows a padlock here. If I just click that padlock it becomes unlocked. Um, you can see here it's a radial gradient. Um, those are the values, CMYK values 58, 51, 50, 44 and on the right hand side 73 67 66 and 85 um, if you don't know how to do a radial gradient you literally draw a shape with your rectangle tool um, hit, hit a gradient in here if you can't see gradient you want to go to windows and gradient and then your default gradient would probably just be black and white hit this middle one here the type is a radial gradient as opposed to a linear or a freeform, so the radial gradient goes from the, the middle to the out outer edges. Um, the location on the on the slider in the middle is around 35%. And if you actually click the gradient tool, you'll see it's an oval. So when you first draw the gradient, it'll probably look like a circle, and you just have to go to the edges and find. Let me do that again. Zoom out. You have to go to the edge and find which one is going to let you move it down into an oval, which is usually the top one, this black circle. So as I move that down, it's bringing the gradient within that. Okay, so I'm going to command to that background, so that's locked. I'm going to get rid of this one and this one. They're just color variants. And I'm going to slide this one over here, so it's just for my reference. There we go. So what I'm going to start with is the ellipse tool so over here under my rectangle tool because I just use that as the ellipse tool you're going to click and drag and hold and just drag out a circle about that sort of size um, right now it's it's used the, the gradient that we had in the background I'm just going to click yellow in fact I'll just click white for ease and what we're going to do is create a big crescent moon and a thin sliver to go on the edge so essentially there's a few different ways of doing this. You can command C which is copy and you can command shift V which is paste in place. So it's pasted a circle directly on that one. I'm just going to chuck the, a little bit of grey black into this so we can see what we're doing. Now if I click and hold down shift as I move. If you can't see these pink lines by the way they're smart guides. Don't design anything without them on because it's just pointless. Go down to view and click smart guides um, that way when you move stuff you can see if it's lined up it jumps around to various different things but if you hold shift it's just going to move it out to the right so we want to move it to somewhere around there now before we use the pathfinder to uh, minus the front I'm going to take this shape away from that shape before we do that I'm just going to command C that shape. So I've got it copied on my um, system. 
I'm going to select the two shapes. I'm going to press V, which is your selection tool. Click that one. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to click that one. I've got the two shapes selected. Pathfinder, again, if you can't see Pathfinder, Pathfinder go to Windows and Pathfinder and get that open. And I'm just going to select this one in shape modes, minus front. And all that does is cut one shape out of the other. And then I'm going to command shift V, which pastes that circle back in place. If I just put a bit of gray on this and hit command and the left square bracket, the left square bracket, command left square bracket just sends it back one. Um, you'll see what I've got here. So I've still got these two shapes. So what I want to do now is get this shape and just bump it out to the, the left a bit until I get a slither that looks about, about right. And zoom in a bit so you can see this a bit better. I could even make it a touch bigger, but I'm not going to. It, it'll work, trust me. So let's Command C this shape, Command C, Command Shift V. And I'm going to move this one along until it just lines up with my white shape. If I just make it a bit darker again. Same thing, select it with V, press Shift and select this one, and minus front. And what we've got there now is a sort of crescent moon. I can straight away um, apply my gradient, which is the first one, these ones. Um, so I'm going to color drop this gradient for speed. I'm going to press gradient and I'm going to drag it. In fact, that gradient, there we go. This gradient is a slightly lighter gradient. So the left color here is only 89% but actually on these first two shapes, we're gonna use 100% black. You can see that. So make it 100% black on the right. The next is white around location 30% and the left is 60%. So that's your, your gradient that you want. And when you've done the gradient, you want to get the black up at the top. So just start at the bottom, move it around until you're sort of happy where it looks. You want to sort of cast a shadow over it. So somewhere around there looks about right. Going to then select the sliver. And as you did before, you've added those yellows. I'm going to color drop this one. And you can see when I hit gradient, it's drawn the gradient um, from left to right. I want it to go from top to bottom. So just drag it from the top to somewhere to the bottom. That looks about right. And then we've got this thin sliver here. If I direct select this, this is just a sort of opaque shadow bit that gives it a bit more, uh, a bit more of a glossy feel. We're going to do it in the same way we did the other ones. We're going to select this shape and command C, command shift V, and then command C, command shift V again. And I'm just going to grab this top shape and move it uh, over a bit. I'm just going to change it to a block color. And when I press V, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to move it around until I'm happy with the sort of slither that I'm getting there. That looks about right. So then with that shape selected, hold shift, select the other shape and minus front. Now what it's done, it's given us two shapes. So with the direct select A, I'm just going to select this and hit uh, delete or backspace. Then with this one selected, we're going to go ahead and color drop this gradient here, which is white and white, but the left hand is set to 50% opacity and the right hand is set to 0% opacity. And the gradient can run along um, from top to bottom. It just gives it a little bit of depth. Okay, so what we're going to do now is press V, which is your select tool. We're going to select those three shapes and command G, which is group them together. So now when I move them, we're not going to lose anything. I, uh, you can um, copy and paste in place, or once you've selected it, you can hold the Alt key down and just click and drag. And then once you've done that, just go to the corner and slowly rotate. And you want to be... It takes a bit of playing, but you want to be fitting it somewhere. Let's go around, somewhere around there. Zoom in a bit on this. And let's get that just 
popped in there. That looks about right. And then you're gonna, with V, you're gonna select both the shapes and you're gonna do the same thing. Press Alt until you see the two cursors and click and drag and rotate it. And you wanna rotate this one quite a long way around. So you wanna just get it rotated. So this point here is almost pointing back into the middle and then just using the cursors you can fine tune the location of it. That looks about right. Now, it looks good. Um, the only thing I tweaked, like I said before, the gradient I had wasn't quite right. This black, I don't really want this to be black anymore, so I'm just gonna select it and go over to the black and just knock it down a bit and see what looks good. That's about right, around 80%. And this gradient here, I don't want this tip to be dark. I want to send this back over here. So the first thing I'm gonna do in the gradient is reverse the gradient. So it chucks the black up there. Again, the black looks a little bit harsh, so I'm just gonna ease that off. Not much, 89% should do the trick. I'm kinda of happy with that, that looks about right. So now the final bit is the, ref or we've got the outer glow actually. Um, so what you're gonna do is with V, select all these shapes, Command C, Command Shift V. And we've got everything selected, so I'm just gonna hit black. And you'll see all the shapes have now um, gone black. And then in Pathfinder, I'm just gonna hit Unite. Um, it's not done it perfectly, but don't worry. We don't really need it to be perfect. Now, press Command in the left square bracket, and it's gonna send it behind these shapes. It's still there, but it's just gone behind those four grouped shapes. Then you're gonna go up to view, uh, sorry, windows, sorry, <laughs> effects, um, and down to stylize and drop shadow. I think I pressed the wrong one there. Effects, stylize, drop shadow. And I've already got mine programmed in to be this sort of yellowy greeny color. The mode is normal, opacity is 50%. The X offset is zero, the Y offset is about 40 pixels, and the blur is about 40 pixels. Um, I, it depends whether you want it to be offset down the bottom. If you don't, you can make the Y offset zero as well, and that'll just put a sort of overall glow. We'll do that, so 50, zero, zero, and 40 pixels in the blur. Hit OK. So then, we're gonna group all these together I'm gonna select all of them and press Command G. That just means I can move them around. I can move, change the size of them, anything I like. With V selected, you're gonna hit Alt and Shift, or Alt and then click and drag it and hold Shift. And you're gonna bring it underneath here. This is to create the reflection. So once you've dragged it underneath, go up to your Reflect tool. If you can't see it, it might be under Rotate. So double click the reflect tool and it wants to be horizontal and click OK. Now it's up to you whether you want it to be touching or whether you just want it to be a bit of a gap. Let's move it up a bit. There's a little bit of a, a gap, which sort of represents the thickness of the glass. And then we're gonna go up to the rectangle tool and we're gonna draw a, just a rough shape, doesn't need to be exact, over our um, logo and we want to fill this with a gradient but this time we just want it to be a simple gradient so on we want black on one side and white on the other and we want the black to be at the bottom and pull this slider up so the black comes quite a way up so once we've got that gradient I'm gonna using V just drag over both the shapes and then go to transparency, hit the little burger menu and click make opacity mask. And what that does is create a, a sort of shadow effect. It doesn't look quite right yet. So we can, when we're in this transparency here, we can click on this box and go to gradient and sort of move things around. So it looks a bit better. Um, and actually in transparency, if we drop the opacity down, 
probably around 36% that looks about right now it doesn't look quite right because this one's been squashed so if I click on this in transparency I can then go to this bo bottom um, point and drag it until I feel like that's about right maybe a little bit more I can then drag on the, the box itself I can play around with the gradient until I'm happy with the way it looks and the transparency now if you find you're getting stuck and you can't then click on anything else that's because you're in the transparency in this right hand side just click back on this side and you'll be able to go back to other things that in a nutshell is how to draw a 3d claw logo i hope that was useful please like and subscribe so i can keep making these tutorials and i'll see you again next time